Welcome to Reading Isaiah. We're into chapter 50, into these last 13 chapters of the book. And um, chapter 50 and 51, just as a glance over it, is incredibly encouraging. It really is. Um, there's a couple of phrases that jump out. One of them is awake. Awake Jerusalem, awake Zion. So um, prepare yourself for an incredibly encouraging conversation, yes. but also one that touches on um, intercession and just the, the way in which the nation walked away from God. Yes. Starting at verse 1. Can I read for us there? Go for it, God. So uh, the Lord, uh, this is what the Lord says, verse 1 in chapter 50. Where's your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Or to which of my creditors did I sell you? Because of your sins you were sold. Because of your transgressions, your mother was sent away. Um, that's for me such a powerful statement that God is just saying, this is not my choice. Mm. I've been a faithful husband to this nation right from the word go. And yeah. I haven't changed my position. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want her to leave because of her sins. She left. She yes. divorced herself from me. Yeah. It's a powerful way in looking at it, uh, a big difference between the two. No? Very much so. And again, we see God's heart, which throughout the whole book we've been mentioning. Yeah. His heart is to have us as his bride and in connection relationship with us. Mm. And it was her sin that pushed them apart. Yeah. 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 So. And very quickly, it makes a turn then in the chapter. And when I came, why was there no one? God saying, I, I, I came to my wife. I came to you. And you weren't where you were supposed to be. You weren't at home anymore. You left. Um, but then it turns um, to verse 4, when, it, uh, when the servant starts speaking. And I hear Isaiah speaking here. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me by morning. He wakens my ear to listen. Let me just jump a bit. Verse 5, it says, I have not been rebellious. Yeah. I have not turned away. Verse 7, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Just in contrast to the start of it, it says, if you stay where God desires you to be, if you stay yes. close to him in his house, this picture of a married couple, if you remain with him, you will be well instructed, you will be empowered, you will not be disgraced. In contrast, you have been disgraced yes. because you walked away. Mm. Yeah. It's quite a beautiful picture. Mm. Good reminder for us. Yeah, <laughs> you love that verse 4, right? Yes, I do. That I speaks love it. to your heart. So um, I'm going to read it again. So the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue. Mm. And I think there's two elements to it. One, it's a gift from the Lord. It's not something that I do, but it's he's given it to me. Um, but a well-instructed tongue, it's encouraging for me that when we are abiding in Christ, we can hear God and speak well instructedly into the people's hearts into mm. people's hearts and encourage so it's not um oh god if it be your will lord could you give a prophetic word but there is a place of allowing our, our tongues to be trained up and well instructed by yeah. the lord but then there is also a sense of i've not been rebellious i've not turned away there's also there's there's ways that we've got to conduct ourselves to yeah. be into that place of well um mm. instructed tongue and then it jumps a little bit later and i am jumping to yeah. 51 uh, verse 16, it says, I will put my words in your mouth and cover you with the shadow of my hand. And I love that. So, that, and we see it also in the New Testament where it says, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to, to speak. That there is yeah. a sense of resting in God and out of that place of rest to, to trust that you're hearing right and speaking. Yeah. And it's not out of a place of like, okay, we've got to do this. We've got to, you know, it, it's such a different picture for me to go, God, you instruct my tongue. I'm going to submit to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And fill me with wisdom and understanding. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did Jesus say? He says, you don't have need that anybody would teach you anymore because the Spirit of God teaches you. Yes. That's really in New Testament words, just so clear. So beautiful. Um, at one stage, he said um, to his disciples, when you are brought before the judges, don't think what you're going to say beforehand. Yes. Because I will give you the words to say. Yeah. Right? And how much in our intellect, if we have a thing that's going to happen, mm. do we run the conversation through oh, our yeah. head? Or do we like, you know, if they say this, this, or flips out on the opposite, it's, it's happened. And then you're like, oh, I should have said this and I should have done this and I should have. Yes. That, that's such a fleshly reaction. Mm. And it's to bring that to the cross under the feet of Jesus and to say, Lord, I'm trusting you, Holy Spirit. You're going to give me the words to say 
um, and and words not to say, and tell me when to keep quiet, and tell yeah. me and to really rest in God instructs us really really well, and He's a good God, and He wants the best for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Now I must say, I found how many times if you do run those arguments in your head beforehand, then I've had this conversation with you how many times already before we even start speaking, yes. and I've got so many assumptions of the things that you said to me in that conversation. That never happened. Yes. <laughs> it's just and not so a good that way. So aggression comes out whether you like it or not. Yes, yeah. because I've been arguing with you all the yes. time. No matter if you've thought it or not. <laughs> I know you have in my head. <laughs> it's terrible. It is a terrible yeah. place to be. And so to really, and again, I think the Sovereign Lord has opened my ears to trust that. God, you've opened my ears, but I choose not to go in rebellion. Mm. I choose not to walk away. And, and it goes hand in hand. Now, I know this is Old Testament, but we've got to jump into the new covenant of the, the Holy Spirit. There is this place of abiding in Christ and the Spirit yeah. that, that we are constantly bringing our hearts into that place of, Lord, make me Christ-like, because it doesn't it's dangerous if it operates outside yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. please don't, I don't just yeah. wake up and go, oh, I've got an instructed tongue. But no, I'm waking up, I'm spending time with the Lord, I'm abiding in Him, I'm getting to know His heart. And out of that place, there's a trust that God will guide my tongue. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That I speak as He speaks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I know His voice. Yeah. So let us read a couple of verses on. I, I, I jump there to seven at some stage because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint and I know I will not be put to shame. He comes with such an incredible confidence, isn't mm -hmm. it? Saying, I know that my God is with me. I know his will. I'm going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, he who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? That's just beautiful if you think about us being dressed in the righteousness of Christ and the justice of Christ. Eh? Yeah. Incredible. There's no charge against me. I'm pure and clean. Um, now, at the end of the chapter from verse 10, I, I think it's such a powerful image, uh, those verses. So just imagine what he is saying. He says, um, who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant. In other words, choose. Are you those at the beginning of the chapter or are you like the one who has a well-instructed time because you haven't rebelled against God? Who among you? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. So that requires me to say, I don't have light without God. Mm. I come to a humble place and yes. saying, I need the light. He's the light of the world. I am not. I need to come into his light. So there's an open invitation, which is beautiful. It's not a condemnation. No. I said, I know you're in darkness. Mm. Um, that's all right. My light has come. Do you want to be in it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but now, all you who light fires and provide yourself with flaming torches. In other words, I don't need God's wisdom. I don't need his instruction. I'm clever in my own eyes. Um, go, walk in the light of your fires mm. and of the torches you have set ablaze. In other words, make your choice, choose. But then this is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. Yeah. If you're going to walk in your own little torch, that light's going to go out and you're going to be in terrible torment. Yeah, yeah it's, quite, it's quite scary. And I think um, coming out of the, the industry I've just come out of, you see people creating their own light in fame or mm. in position or in, and, and I mean, I'm just going to say, many of them are not very happy. Like there's a sense of they have everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that's just a, a tiny salt of, I mean, a tiny pinch of salt of to what the scripture is saying. But you can see it when people create their own lights. It's mm. frivolous. It's, it's going to be ash in eternity. And yeah. there's not that sense of, thank you, Jesus, that you touch me in my spirit, in my emotion, where I am. Yeah. 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 yeah I know. And, just like so many of the other chapters, keep reading. It's, a, it's the conversation. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Again, those who realized I'm in darkness. Mm -hmm. I need his light. I pursue his righteousness. Um, look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Um, look to Abraham, your father. So he's going back. I mean, you took us back there how many times? Yes. Where did it all start? Abraham, a man of faith. Yes. That's where God started building the nation. He's saying, that's like the, the quarry that I've been taken out. Eh? The massive, beautiful. massive. It's yes. beautiful, powerful. Yeah. yeah. And um, then 
just get the picture again, we've gone through this history section where um, literally the nation has diminished to one city, Jerusalem. There's nothing else left. It's incredible destruction. If you can sort of think about our nation, just all that's left is Cape Town from all of it. Mm. That, that would be a terrible place. And just how many of our children would be gone out of the land and all of that. Um, how the economy would be destroyed. So that's where the rest of the book then grows out of. So he's saying to them, look to Abraham. Yeah. He was one man, one woman. Yeah. And God made a nation out of him. God can do this again. Yeah. Trust him. Be a man of faith like him and you would receive the promise that he had. Yeah. We were yeah. talking earlier before we started recording that um, 51 for me is like a blueprint on how we handle hard times in our lives. Mm. Um, it's very clear. Awake, awake. So as you were saying, you know, awake Stuart family, awake Mount Boss. Yeah. But, but often when we find ourselves in hard times, we can position ourselves to go, oh, God, please did you bring a breakthrough? And yeah. um, and when we read, I'm going to jump if you don't mind. Yeah, do. um, where is it about dress yourself? Oh yeah, in verse nine, awake, awake, um, arm of the Lord, which is us. Clothe yourself with strength. So it's an instruction that we've got to clothe ourselves in strength. So it's not like waiting for God, like a victim going, God, bring breakthrough, bring breakthrough. There's actually a call to clothe ourselves in strength. So what does that look like? And for me, yeah. 51 is the br- blueprint where it says, think about Abraham. Think about Sarah, reminisce about the things that I've already done. Later on, we're going to see, talk about being rescued from Egypt. Talk yes. about, um, you know, the, the, the sea opening up and you crossing. So it's about speaking the miraculous things of God into our being. And so for yeah. me, when it says awake, awake, my sense is, Lord, I will wake up to the things of you. I will come and climb into the word because obviously Jesus is the word. So he breathes life into it and I will start to read it and I will start to declare it and I will start to come into agreement with it yeah so there's that aspect but then there's also a revelation aspect where we overcome the enemy by the power of the blood and the testimony Word of our our testimony. Yeah. yeah and and so there's that element of going god i'm not just going to sit like a victim saying sure mm. life is so bad this situation is so bad i'm going to come and declare who you are from the word and i'm going to declare my my um breakthroughs that i've seen your hand do throughout my life yeah and it's a very different place of positioning ourselves so i love 51 from a from that point of view, it's my blueprint to go, how do I pray? Yeah. Um, and, and something similar, like, like uh, to even pray the scriptures, God, you've already, you looked at, and we looked at Abraham, we see what you've done. We're looking and really declaring those scriptures into being because there's yeah. power in the word of God and it speaks and it shapes our situations and circumstances when we yeah. come into agreement with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That Sorry, phrase appears <laughs> three times. I must just check forward if it's in the later in 53 as well. But um, it's verse 9. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord. Verse 17. Awake, awake, rise up, Jerusalem, you who drunk from the hand of the Lord. Chapter 20, uh, 52, verse 1. Awake, awake, Zion, clothe yourself with spring, strength. Put on your garments of splendor, Jerusalem. Um, so... It's such a powerful word because it means uh, you have victory, mm-hmm. you have strength, you have, you're in a position where Christ, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. places, you've been given every spiritual gift in the heavenly realm, mm-hmm. um, you're justified uh, by the blood of the Lamb, uh, put into righteousness, all of those things are there. You've, you've got the wisdom of God at your disposal, um, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, yeah, um, but you have to wake up to it. Yeah. I've said, who am I? Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> what have God done for me? Who is my God? Um, I, which means I have to shake myself a bit, clap myself a bit and say, come on, come on. Wake up. Yes. Yeah. 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 And do it with others like the prophet yes. does here. He speaks to the people. He speaks to the nation. So, you know, in the body of Christ, I have to speak to my family. I have to speak to the people around me and remind them this is what our God has done. Yes. It is a tough time. I see it. But Remember. this is what our God has done. Yeah. Whether we've seen it, whether the scripture's seen it, this is who God is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, it, it makes me so excited. And now I'm going. But in the Old Testament, there was no Holy Spirit filled everybody. It only mm. filled select people. Yeah. And so when he's speaking awake, awake here, he's really speaking to a nation that doesn't have the leading and guiding of 
Christ and inward. of the Spirit, yeah. inward. So he's giving them instructions. How much more now mm. that we get to be filled with the Spirit, walking in the blessing of the new covenant, that that um, th this is, is, for me, it's almost like saying it's not as hard as it was for them because we've got the Spirit inside yeah, of us. Inward working. But, but it's to position our minds because what a man thinks he becomes. It's to position our minds to go, God, I am choosing to acknowledge who you are. I yeah. am choosing the Spirit. I am choosing um, to say you are my breakthrough. Um, yeah. But how much more authority comes out of us because of Christ and and um, Christ, the hope yeah. of glory in us, and the Holy Spirit filling us, yeah. and leading and guiding yeah. us? Yeah, absolutely. Man, it makes me excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, just verse 12 here. Yeah, eh? As much as it's encouragement, stirring up and everything, it's also comfort. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Uh, who are you that you fear me, immortals, human beings who are but grass, that you forget the Lord, your maker, who stretches out the heavens and relays the foundation of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor uh, who is bent on distraction. For uh, where is the wrath of the oppressor? Mm. Just incredibly encouraging, mm. but also just speaking the truth and say, come out, stand up tall. Yes. Don't fear people. Yeah. Eh? Which is also just a good thing for me because sometimes I can be a bit harsh, tell people, no, come on, right. <laughs> but there is an acknowledgement of, hey, you're in a bad place. That yeah. is hard, but your God is stronger. Yeah. I think you do that much better than I do. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> You got a pastoral heart. <laughs> I have to remind myself. Yeah. yeah but, but it is. It's to wake us up and to go, God, you are bigger than my circumstance right yeah. now. And I think we've we've touched on this topic throughout the whole mm. book. Um, and we see, yes, even when the, the nation has gone away from God. So, yes, there are times that we blatantly sin mm. and we are removed from God. But then there are these calls that says, wake up. And it's to come back in, in repentance and to say, God, I acknowledge you. Despite where I've been, I acknowledge you um, as my king. And I'm yeah. going to step back into the truth of who you are. Yeah. 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 So just practically in intercession as well. Mm. The, these phrases uh, sounds to me like uh, this is the way I should pray. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because it is different praying sort of from the outside into something. But I found myself often in intercession, um, seeing myself speaking to a situation, mm -hmm. uh, to a school that I'm praying for, to a town that I'm praying for, or to an individual or a family that I'm praying for. Yes. Um, as uh, wake up, pity, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the spirit, <laughs> calling it out, yes. um, uh, and seeing in my spirit the result of what I'm praying. It's like a declaration over somebody. It's a different way of praying. Yes. It's not like praying from the outside, speaking to the Lord about pity, but it's sort of like in the spirit, speaking to pity, because I know the spirit of the Lord is in him. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, I totally understand what you're saying, and I think that's why I said this is such a, a blueprint book for us, mm. is to come so... Uh, I'm not going to name names because... Uh, but I've named were, Pity. No, no, no. I don't know who no, Pity but is. In our, in our intercession <laughs> group, we've got uh, groups that pray in the week. And for for weeks, I just had this word, awake, speak awakening into my okay. voice, speak awakening. And we were, we were praying it and praying it. And one of the ladies that I love dearly hadn't been coming to prayer meeting because she had work issues. And then one morning she walked in and she just like, she was like, I don't care what we're praying today, but today we are awakening Mount Boss. And she started praying, but she started shouting, Awake Mount Boss! And I was like, <laughs> Yes, Lord, I'm hearing you. We're in the same, like, we've been praying it for weeks before. And then she just came in with a fire in her belly, like, We are yes. praying. And out of that, we started to hear testimonies of what God was doing in different places. And I'm like, there is, there is something when we pray the word of God aligned with the spirit, there is so much power in it because yeah. God shows us how he wants us to intercede. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we had fun in that. I just, I was like, Lord, please don't let anybody look through this window right now. They will think we are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they'll be awake enough to yes. think that we're crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's close this off in prayer exactly as we said. Father, we just praise you for the pleasure of interceding. Mm. Thank you that you, Jesus, are the intercessor on behalf of the body of Christ in the presence. You are the high priest that went in with your own blood. Um, and thank you that you've given us uh, this pleasure, the delight of joining you 
in uh, the ministry of reconciliation, like your word says, of calling in the spirit people to know you, to love you, to recognize you. And um, even as we read this, Father God, I pray for prayers to wake up in our hearts, um, that we will hear your spirit speaking into us and speaking ultimately through us intercession on behalf of people that you dearly love. Thank you, Father God, for this privilege. We gladly stand in this ministry. Amen. Amen.